Successful travel between grandparents and grandchildren can often be a mystery called the travel abyss. Failure is deep with no way out. Our young people are filled with energy and excitement, requiring constant movement. On the opposite end of the spectrum, we are slower in step with different agendas. However, with a few pointers and tips, we can adjust our travel agenda to make the journey a pleasure for both sets of travelers. A trip to Manhattan is not for the faint of heart, but what a great place to test our theory of how mixed generations can enjoy traveling together. Meet our three travelers. Hi, I'm Sita. Hi, I'm Twilight. Hi, I'm Annie. Welcome to New York City. Here are some tips for traveling with grandchildren. Expectations are first on our list. Have you selected a destination and points of interest your grandchild wants to visit? Discuss your plans with him or her and make sure this will be an exciting adventure. If not, find an alternative destination. Talk about what you have planned and determine if this is the child's idea of a fun trip. Next, check on travel readiness. Is our young companion ready to be absent from a parent? A quick test might be an overnight stay at your house, just to make sure being away from familiar surroundings and people aren't cataclysmic. Next, safety is always important. Younger travelers should have some form of ID attached to their person. Sita was wearing an ID bracelet in the event that she would be separated from us. Medications are critical. If the child is on medication, make sure you have an ample supply and a written itinerary of when the meds should be taken. Now, let's get started. The first thing we want to concentrate on is learning new things. Whether you're 7 or 77, there is always something new to learn. When we arrived in Manhattan, one of the first things we wanted Sita to learn to do was the basics of riding a subway. Of course, we wanted to incorporate fun into the process. How to swipe her Metro card, safety on the platform, and the diversity of the people who ride the train. Regardless of age, when we get hungry, thirsty, and tired, our attitude changes to grumpy and stubborn. Don't let this spoil your trip. Carry energy bars and bottled water. Stop often to rest and grab a snack. Just 15 minutes resting on the steps of a museum or at a cafe will energize the group to carry on. Having fun is the ultimate goal of traveling with grandchildren. That's easy when you ask the question, what would be fun for him or her? Make an itinerary. Spontaneity isn't what it's cracked up to be. This doesn't mean you can't change your mind, but if you're spending all your time zigzagging from one place to another, that takes away from the time you can spend seeing new things. Don't expect every activity to be successful because the next stop on your agenda might be that perfect ticket. I didn't have high hopes for the Museum of Natural History, but Sid liked it so much, she didn't want to leave. A ride in a hansom cab was something we thought would be a winner. Sid, eh, not so much. We knew certain activities were natural winners, like going to the American doll store and selecting a new doll. Sita's selection is her lasting physical memory of New York City. Here's a quick review of our tips. Is the destination well suited? 
Are our grandchildren comfortable being away from home? Be sure to keep them safe. IDs and medications are critical. Make travel a learning experience. Feel good. Rest, eat, and play. Be physically comfortable. Layer clothing and wear comfortable shoes. Have fun. Above all else, make the trip a memorable one. Hopefully these tips for traveling with grandchildren will help you make your next adventure a joyful one.